Hey, Roadrunners, welcome back. Did you enjoy the game yesterday? It sure feels good to be 7-0-1 conference. Heading home for our final home game, senior day, right? Last game of the year. We host UTEP, another blue and orange school. <laughs> it's a theme in Texas, isn't it? What surprised you about yesterday's game? Now, I'll tell you what surprised me. A little bit. Not not a lot, because I kind of suspected it was coming. Was the way we pushed around Rice at the line of scrimmage, both both offensively and defensively. And that showed up in our in our in our in our running the ball. Like when Frank took off, he he his one run, he avoided one person, but then there was nobody there. Then when he snuck it up, when he did a pretty much a design quarterback run, there's nobody there. I mean, he just went right through the middle, right? We had two hundred 60 yards rushing. We had 394 yards of offense. Uh, we we're halfway to our normal output of 500 yards in the first half. And then, you know, brought in Eddie Lee, ran the ball a lot with Justin Rodriguez. He got a lot of carries. But Kavorian got his big run. Brendan got some big runs. I mean, it, it was just a complete game. But what really surprised me was how dominant our defense was. I we were there. We were jump. We were we were in throwing lanes. We were right there with their wide receivers, except for that one breakdown by the second team, where they had the wide open wide receiver. Right. That that was the only breakdown. And, and you look at the stats, and what's really weird about it is Rice had the ball for thirty five minutes, start twenty five. That, that was a little, little, I don't want to say, that's one of those confusing stats, right? Where it didn't feel like Rice had the ball more than UTSA had the ball, did it? But they did. And it, I think what happens is, and this is where it gets to us, even when we were in the second half, I think we were probably staying, staying on our normal schedule. And that is to say, Get ready. Look at the sidelines. What's the play? Get ready. Get set. If they don't make any adjustments, hike the ball, right? If they make adjustments, wait. Look back at the sideline, right? Well, they weren't really making any adjustments at that point. So it was pretty much straight up football. And maybe we could have hiked the ball when Eddie was in there and Cam Peters was in there, you know, with like more with like five seconds left on the play clock when we had the ball and, and eaten into the play clock, the game clock. The game did seem to drag a little bit for a lot of running. Uh, we ran the ball a lot. We only threw the ball 22 total times, 23 total times. Uh, so the ball, should, the clock should have just kept running, right? Now Rice had to throw the ball a little bit more. So that kept the, kept the game going. But what a nice moment to go into Rice Stadium in that just sloppy, nasty, cold weather be prepared for it. Because remember, we weren't prepared for it last year against North Texas at all. Now, I don't know the difference between the weather last year and this year, but I do know it was nasty here in Houston, right? It was drizzly. It was wet. It was sub 50 degrees, low 40s. And the kids played like it didn't even, buy, like a normal summer day. I mean, <laughs> they, they played just like anything. Just like any old game, that I didn't see any any issues with throwing the football. I didn't see any issues with dropping the football. When Frank when Frank fumbled, he got hit pretty good, right? He he was twisting, got hit from the behind. He probably could have had two hands on the ball, but to his credit, when that ball popped in there, he starts looking around. It just happened to go behind him, right? He twisted the wrong way, and all the road runners were looking for it. So it wasn't like it just slipped out of his hands or anything like that, right? So that was that was uh, a bad part of the game. We already talked about the wide open player, but what the defense did, they came in early and set the tone. Corey Mayfield, Dadrian Taylor, Brown, all those guys, Ligon, they came in and they set the tone. And when you looked at the players, and, and I watched it on TV, I watched it on ESPN+, Plus, and when they showed Maka there, and they showed them against their, their defensive line, 
This one of the few times when we're playing another G5 school, a storied school like Rice, that we were physically bigger than them. We weren't physically bigger than Western Kentucky. We weren't physically bigger than UAB. But this Rice team, we were physically bigger than. And I think it paid dividends. Uh, these kids are all upperclassmen. So previous administration did a lot of good, a good recruiting, finding these kids. But guess what? We've got we've to keep recruiting. We've got to keep coaching them up. Therein lies where we're at right now as a program. You see the kids know where to go. You see the kids know, what, know what's expected of them. And you see the kids show up every game. Every game. There's only one game with this coaching staff that any one of us can say the team didn't have it in bet between their ears. And that's the UNT game last year. And it's true. Just did not play like it mattered. In their defense, emotional win, coasting the West, uh, coast. <laughs> emotional win over UAB, clinching the Western Division. First ever title game meant we were going to host, right? We had to win. Meant we were going to host. And and I think that there was that letdown. It's kind of to be expected, right? We went into a buzzsaw expecting that. Now, what's going to happen with UTEP? We'll be at home. We're going to be at home for our next two games, right? Most likely, we're going to play... <laughs> We're either going to play UNT or Western Kentucky. Depends on the final game of the season. That's a little tiresome. It really... <laughs> I, I, I told some people I would rather play FAU than Western Kentucky or UNT a second time this season, right? We're looking at how FAU got it put on them by Middle Tennessee State. I was right. But it is what it is. Now, I wonder if they both lose and FAU wins. Because FAU, they all have three losses. I think I think North Texas has the 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 the, the tiebreaker over all of them. I, I'd have to look. I'll look at that in my next video. So either way, either way, we're hosting. It's in your, it's in your, it's in your to buy your tickets are reserved. Obviously, we're home team, so we get to reserve all our tickets. I have a lot of tickets. I'm only going to get my normal three. Give up my other two. Unless somebody reaches out to me saying, hey, they want to go to the conference championship game. They want really good seats, right? I'm not buying five seats, seven seats, eight seats like I normally buy, right? That are in my, my not for the championship game. So anyway, did it, did it, uh, did it, uh, surprise you how well our defense played? Because mind you, Rice put up 28 on UAB. Rice held UAB to 24 points. Rice held UAB's rushing attack down. And we went out, I mean, I, any given any given Saturday, right? I, I To me, it surprised me a little bit. The score, the, the overall outcome. Like I, I, I in my video leading up to it, I said, watch us win like 17 to seven. That's kind of what I was expecting with the weather. Boy, the kids proved me wrong, and I was, I admitted in the last video, happy to be wrong about that. Right? So we've got Kavorian, we've got Brendan. See what Chris Carpenter can do. I, I don't think whoever we play again is going to be ready for this Roadrunners team in the conference championship game unless we get, we get riddled with injuries. These kids are playing different than the beginning part of the year. If you look at way, way we played tough against Houston, right? But if you look at how we've played against North Texas, UAB, La Tech, right? These last four games that we've played and now Rice, we are, no lie, we are a different football team. There's just something different. I don't know what it is. I think everything's clicking. Like Dadrian said when I talked to him after the La Tech game, everything just clicked that game. And maybe things are clicking now. Still clicking. They understand 
They're relying on each other. They know where they're supposed to get, right? When certain pass patterns are run. Maybe. Or maybe we just played some teams that our defense is better suited to defending. But we're a different football team. We are a different football team. Adversity and overcoming adversity breeds greatness, right? Like Gunny Highway said, he adapted, he overcame, he conquered, right? And that's what U UTSA has done this year. Let's talk about the season as a whole real quick. I'm going to do a full video on that. But to me, this season right now is probably, last year was a magical season. I'm not taking anything away from it. But this season right now, right now, is probably our second or third best season in program history. And may go down in our entire program history as one of our most influential seasons. Because think about what this builds up. We've got kids. They got injured. Next kids came in. And they learn from that. That gets passed on in recruiting. That gets passed on, at least with this coaching staff. That builds a mentality about our overall program, our fan base. Hey, there's a second string guy there. We agree with the first string guy being out there. Frank, right? But A. Lee better be ready when it's his time. It's your job as a coaching staff to get him ready. There's no excuses for him not being ready, at least when it comes to what play to call, when to call it, what, 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 what formation to be in. Now, is he going to be able to throw the ball and run the ball like Frank? Is anybody in our program history going to be able to do that? No. Frank is a generational player. If he was on a P5 school program, He's playing, he's, he's in the Heisman talk. I'm being dead serious. He's in the Heisman conversation. If he's up with Barry Looney at Illinois, you don't think he would be? I do. Because he'd be putting up these same numbers against better opponents, right? Now he had very average throwing, but don't tell me his legs didn't win that football game. His legs won that football game. Straight up. Put Rice in a hole early with that run. That it sealed the deal right then and there. Boom. But anyway, thankful to have Frank. He's been a great asset to our program. He's been a great ambassador to our program. Whatever he decides to do, he's got another year. But you saw when he got hit on that one player, he kind of laid there and then got up limping a little bit. And that's a that's a big toll on his body. Now, if he comes back and gets a doctorate in something, hey, good for him. Absolutely. Use every tool to your advantage when you're in college. You got a skill, school's willing to pay you to come there and use that skill, then do it. Absolutely. Like I said, if he doesn't make it to the next level, there's worse things in life than having a UTSA diploma, playing for UTSA, having a UTSA diploma, and then going out in the private world or government world, you know, whatever, and earning a paycheck. There's worse things in life. Way worse. Anyway, Roadrunners, peace out. What a win. I can't wait to get back to the Dome next week to have a party, a pre-party with all my buddies in Section 110. Whoo, it's going to be fun. Fun, 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 fun. Especially Thanksgiving weekend. So I'm going to stay there all weekend. So I'll get to party. Pate. Go downtown. Pate. So that leads me to probably we probably won't get a pre pre video. You might. Because I'm working from home this week. But having to travel and everything and my video after the game. So I may have to do like a this game doesn't care video. This game doesn't matter. I don't care video. You know what I mean? But this mat this season's magical. Put it in context of everything we've been through. This is this is a podium season. No lie. No lie when it comes to our, our, our history. Season one, conference championship season, and this season. No matter what happens this season, this is a podium season. And in fact, if somehow UTSA wins the conference championship, this might be our greatest season of all time. Just how it is. I'm just saying, that's just my own two eyes. Tell me what you think. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you think. And Pogos, sorry I couldn't make it to the game. It, it was just too cold. I mean, I would have been miserable. I wouldn't have watched the game, right? I'd have been... But I love your comment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for commenting. Peace out. Boo!